Uh, thank you, General Campbell, uh, for your service to the country and your leadership. I wanted to ask you about, uh, right now, the administration's stated policy in Afghanistan. Um, as reiterated when uh, President Ghani visited our country in March, is that we will be drawing down to a normal embassy presence in Kabul with security assistance, uh, just as we've done in Iraq, and by the end of 2016. If that remains our policy, in light of the capability gaps that you've identified in your testimony and have been identified many times before this committee, what will be the consequences of that in Afghanistan? Ma'am, if we go to a normal embassy presence, as, as you stated there, uh, we would have very limited uh, train and advise assist capability from Kabul. And what do you think will happen to Afghanistan? And what do you, if we do that? Well, it'll, it'll take much longer to, to continue to train in some of those critical areas that we need to train. So um, uh, it would be very difficult, again, to do train, advise, assist. So would we lose, I mean, would the Taliban gain territory? Well, again, view? I think, uh, ma'am, I think that the Afghan security forces, um, you know, where they are today, to where they were two years ago, where they'll be in another year and a half, they continue to improve. I, I do not believe that the Taliban can take over the government. I do believe that Taliban understand that they, they stretch the Afghan security forces, pull them out to the outer pieces of Afghanistan, uh, cause casualties on some of the remote checkpoints. Um, well, General, I guess the question I want to understand is, um, without getting into numbers of troops or anything like that, do you think, based on your military advice, being the commander in Afghanistan, that we should revert to an embassy presence alone uh, by the end of 2016, do you think that is what we need to do to make sure that Afghanistan doesn't become yet again a haven for Al Qaeda? Yes, ma'am. I, I understand the question. I, I have provided my chain of command options because I believe there have been a lot of different transition over the last couple of years since that decision was made. Uh, and if you go to just embassy only, again, our, our ability to do TA is very limited. Our ability to do CT. Uh, is much more limited. And so your recommendations would a presence beyond the embassy without getting into what they are? Yeah, my, my the different options that we've laid out through the chain of command provides uh, our, our senior leadership with options above and beyond um, a normal embassy presence based on changes that have happened over the last two years and changes on the So here's what I want to make sure the American people understand. Why does this matter? Why does it matter that we continue to work with the Afghan security forces to ensure that Afghanistan does not go back to a place where it becomes a haven for a group like Al Qaeda? As I said in the opening statement, ma'am, Afghanistan continues to be a dangerous area. That region of the world, you know, all of its neighbors don't play by rules. Um, areas in Pakistan, areas in Afghanistan, if not continue to have pressure on them. Uh, Does it matter to our security? I think that, as I said up front, we haven't had another 9-11 attack on our homeland because we've had forces that have been forward deployed and have continued to pr provide pressure and have continued to uh, train our Afghan partners so that they have uh, this capability to take that on for themselves. But that's going to take some time. I wanted to ask you about Iran's activities in Afghanistan. Can you tell us uh, what Iran, if anything, is doing right now in Afghanistan in terms of supporting the Taliban or other groups? Yes, ma'am. We have, you know, at this level, I can tell you that we have some reports that Iran has provided uh, money, weapons, uh, mostly in the West, in the Herat area, to the Taliban uh, to fight Daesh. And so they're supporting the Taliban right now, um, Iran, with resources, uh, money, and weapons. Again, we have reports that they have provided money and weapons to the, to the Taliban, mostly in the west and around the Herat area. Um, I don't have numbers of how much, how much money, how extensive that is, but there have been reports. Yes, ma'am. How has uh, cooperation been with Pakistan in dealing with the Haqqani network, and uh, what more should we be doing there? 
Well, as you know, Haqqani continues to be a, a big threat, not only for against the coalition, but also the Afghan people. Haqqani are the ones that uh, are traditionally responsible for the high-profile attacks, the V-bids, the vehicle-borne IEDs, the suicide vests. Uh, Haqqani are the ones that uh, attack innocent civilians. So uh, what I've stressed to Pakistan, and I think uh, at all levels of our government, from uh, DOD all the way to the White House, continue to express to Pakistan that they have to do more uh, to get Pakistan to not provide sanctuary to Haqqani uh, inside of Pakistan. Um, and so we, we got to continue to keep the pressure on uh, and make sure that Afghanistan, uh, make sure that Pakistan understands that there is a common enemy here, that Afghanistan and Pakistan should work together. Uh, and terrorism, you know, knows no boundaries. So uh, they have to work at that together. Thank you, General.